Okay, this method, uh, you know, I after experience the Holy Spirit, I pray for people. I pray for people and people experience the Holy Spirit in different ways. And sometimes these are non-Christians. And I ask them what they experience. And then they tell me the experience, um, peace, love, uh, comfort, healing. And I told them, this is, you know, I asked them too, did, did you experience the work of God? Do you think it's the work of God? And I told them that this is the, it's in the Bible. The Bible promised that. And then, um, and I told that God works in your life. So do you want to uh, receive, continue to receive the blessings of God? And then I lead them to believe, you know, to believe in Jesus. So this is the experience God evangelism that I've done for many people. And I hope that you would um, uh, practice doing this. So after I teach, you can practice laying hand on one another. But first you need to devote yourself. Now I watched the video, I watched the video um, uh, in the break time just now of you in a meeting and I have to say that you haven't learned to concentrate. Some of you were looking around, um, not concentrated. So we need to learn to concentrate and say, Lord, I love you. I like you. I desire you that it, you know, the anointing has to come from a long time loving God, praising God, worshiping God, dedicating to God. Uh, then the Holy Spirit will come powerfully. If not, if people are not devoted, they're not concentrated in the prayer, what happens is they, they just won't experience the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's very important for us to to learn to concentrate, to appreciate God. God, you are so good. I concentrate in loving you. I want to spend time loving you. I appreciate you. I enjoy you. You are so good. Lord, you are so good. So we concentrate and relax our body. And then we can feel the presence of God upon us. So that's something we need to build up. So I hope that you learn to build up and say, I appreciate God. I like God. I desire God. I really appreciate what God has done for me. And I hunger for God. Lord, I hunger for you. Lord, I want you. I need you. So it has to come from the heart that we really like God. And, and you know, that it, He really will come. He really will come. You know, I've trained people in different countries to hunger for God and then they will start to experience the Holy Spirit. So it takes time and efforts. So I hope you all would, would, you know, would hunger for God and then in your prayer, you will not be looking around, you will not be distracted, but you learn to concentrate and say, Lord, I love you, I like you, I desire you. Okay, now, so this is, these are the steps of experience God evangelism. Now, earlier, I have talked about how we experience God, earlier. How we experience the Holy Spirit. So these are ways that people can experience. A lot of people experience peace, that uh, like burdens go away, burdens go away, and the body, they feel comfort over the body, and love flow into them, and comfort inner healing, physical healing, and demons being driven out, and or swaying of the body. Now most people experience the swaying of the body, the comfort over the body, uh, peace, uh, comfort of the hearts. So these are ways that people experience the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the steps to use it for evangelism is First, we converse with the person and listen and respond to their feelings and needs. So, we listen to them. We pay attention. You know, we, we accept their feelings. Now, it's very easy for people to say, Oh, you don't need to worry about it. You just trust in God. You pray. You'll be okay. So, um, 
some people just say that that is teaching. Now, when uh, we want to connect with people, then we want to listen. We want to listen to the person, to pay attention to the person. So if a person says, you know, I feel pain, I, you know, I, I'm hurt by my spouse, then you say, oh, yes. Then we feel the feeling. Think, imagine we, we were that person being hurt by the spouse. And then you say, oh, I know that that must be painful. That hurts you. you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me more about it. Does it affect your sleep? Does it affect your appetite? Does it make you unhappy? So we can ask questions to find out and feel the feeling as if we were that person and, and feel the feeling, that, you know, if I'm like, like the person, how would it be if, you know, the spouse is not nice to me? How would it affect me? So we, we listen. Now, this listening will connect, connect with the person. The person feel we are there with him, that we understand him, we feel his feeling. So it's very important that we learn to understand people's feeling before we can really serve God with power. So we need to understand the people's feeling and respond to them and say, yes, I know that that hurts. I know that it's not easy for you. I know you feel painful. I know it hurts you and make you feel disappointed. Okay. And then share how we or someone else has similar problems and experience help from God. So we can share similar experience of, of ourselves or someone else. We can say, yes, I, I know that hurts and I've been hurt by people like that in the past too. And it make me feel very sad and unhappy and it affects my sleep. My, and uh, I, I uh, lose the joy. And then we can ex share how we experience help from help from God. So first we need to experience help from God. That I hope we all experience help from God by praying, by praying for people and seeing people how they experience help from God. So this is something we need to train ourselves and train our members. We need to train our members to be sensitive to the presence of God and to be sensitive to God, how He has helped us. So if we feel uh, comforted, we remember that. Yes, I have been comforted by God. I have experienced the comfort of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, and how, how it helps me. So we share with that with the person. And then we invite him to receive the laying on of hands. So do you like me to pray for you? Is it okay that I lay hand on you? So ask the person. Instead of forcing it on him, ask the person. Now what if the person is not willing? Then we say, okay, uh, I don't lay hand on you and you still open your heart and you can still experience him. But it's better to lay hand on you. But if the person is not willing, then we say, okay, we'll pray together and open your heart. And then in the prayer, we lead the person to relax and enjoy God and to open the heart to love God. So we invite the person to open the heart, to enjoy God. God is coming to you. God is blessing you. So we believe that God is right here. So we open our heart to God and say, Lord, I'm th I thank you that you're with me. I thank you that you give me peace and love and joy. So we open the heart, help the person to open the heart to enjoy God, to experience God. After the prayer, we say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Now, why do we say keep the eyes closed? Because if the person open the eye, he might be distracted. So we don't want the person to be distracted. So we ask the person to keep the eyes closed and then ask him, have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then if the person has experienced some work from God, we can explain from the Bible that these are the works of the Holy Spirit. So first, you know, we can ask him, we can ask him, uh, do you think this is from God? Do you think, you know, that I can make this happen to you? Now, if the person say, I feel comfort over my body, I feel peace, I feel the burdens go away. And we can say, do you think I can cause that to happen? Or does it mean that God is working in your life? Now, if the person, you know, doesn't know 
how to answer we can say pay attention to your heart to your body did you experience anything in your heart do you experience anything over your body and if the person has experienced the Holy Spirit then we say well this is the work of God this is the work of God that uh, and the Bible explains that so you use the Bible verses I used earlier that you can watch this video again that, you know that uh, the verse about peace in John 14 27 the love of God that uh, Romans 5 5 uh, the burdens go away that uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 so these verses we can explain to them that and also Isaiah 61 1 to 3 about the uh, heal the brokenhearted so so those are from uh, you know it's from the Bible the Bible explains that and then seven we can say you have experienced the work of God do you want God to continue bless you for your whole lifetime do you want God to bless your whole life and then if he's willing then explain that Jesus is God and has died for our sins to forgive our sins and give us eternal life as if he's willing to accept Jesus as his Savior so we can you know tell him that you know that if the person is willing for Jesus to bless him then we'll say you know uh, let me explain the gospel to you what Jesus has done for us that from the beginning in the Bible already prophesied that one day uh, the seed of the woman will come that's in uh, Genesis chapter 3 and then in different parts of, of the Bible like in Psalm 22 prophesied that Jesus would die on the cross for our sins and Isaiah 53 talk about this servant the suffering servant who died for us so that we have eternal life so Jesus died for us to give us eternal life and uh, so do you want Jesus to give you eternal life and bless your whole life and then forever forever and ever now on earth and also in heaven so Jesus is the Savior do you want him to to be your Savior now if and then if he's willing then we ask him to pray this sinner's prayer okay so uh, now you, you can say it with me okay so I say it two times first time or maybe you read it together with me now okay just read it with me so when you say with the person you say okay dear Lord Jesus and then the person will say dear Lord Jesus I know that you are God I know that you are God but now you just say once with me read to, together with me dear Lord Jesus I know that you are God I'm sorry for my sins I've hurt other people's feelings I have yelled at people I have lied I have been greedy and selfish thank you for dying on the cross to pay for the penalties of my sins please forgive my sins and give me eternal life thank you for loving me and giving me eternal life I love you I'm willing to follow you and love you all the days of my life in Jesus name I pray amen so in this prayer that we admit that you are God Jesus is God or the Heavenly Father is God I'm sorry for my sins and then we pray uh, uh, for the different kind of sin we say it out and ask God to forgive us and then we say please forgive my sins and give me eternal life thank you for loving me and giving me eternal life and also we can say thank you for dying on the cross for my sins and then my response to you I love you I'm willing to follow you and love you all the days of my life so uh, if you don't remember this I just say again so first we admit that you are God and then we confess our sins and then we thank you Jesus for dying on the cross please forgive my sins and give me eternal life and I'm willing to continue to love you and to obey you and go to church and follow you in Jesus name we pray amen so that's the content of the prayer let me say that again so you remember so we in the prayer we lead the person to say dear Lord Jesus uh, I believe that I know that you are God and I admit I'm a sinner I'm a sinner I've sinned against you I've lied I've told lies I've gossiped I yell at people I've hurt people's feelings I have not worshipped you with all my hearts I have uh, been greedy and and uh, 
and also uh, selfish. Please forgive my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Please give me eternal life. And I'm willing to follow you and love you. So very important that you lead the person to admit that Jesus is God or the Heavenly Father is God and admit and confess our sins and ask God to forgive us. And then we are willing to follow God. So, okay, so that's the sinner's prayer. And I hope that you, you, and then you can tell the person, you know, you sincerely pray, ask the person if he had sincerely repented of his sins and ask Jesus to be a savior. And if he says he has, then we can tell him that the Bible promises us that he's forgiven and will have eternal life. So ask him if he did sincerely confess his sin and trust in Jesus as his Savior and ask Jesus to forgive him and save him, give him eternal life if he has, then the Bible promised that he has eternal life. Then also we should tell him how he can continue to follow God. Okay, so continue to repent of his sins, continue to trust in Jesus as his Savior, continue to have a personal relationship with God by reading the Bible, praying and praising God and going to church to worship Him and to continue to love God with all His heart and obey God, especially to tell people about Jesus and to follow Jesus and to serve God. Anything we do to glorify God and bless people and serve and serving God. So these are the six fruits of salvation that uh, if you remember, I've talked about that sixth fruit of salvation is if a person is saved, he continues to bear these fruits, that he will continue to repent of his sins. Now, the first two are related to salvation. That is, when we are saved, we repent of our sin and trust in Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord. So he'll continue to repent of his sins and continue to trust in Jesus as his Savior. And then continue to have a living relationship with God by reading the Bible, praying, and praising God, and going to church to worship Him, and then to love God. So these two are related to relationship that will uh, have a, build a relationship with God and love God. And then the last two are related to action, to obey God and to serve God. So these are the six fruit of salvation. So we tell them. Now it depends on the person. Sometimes if the person is willing, we'll say, okay, can I bring you to church tomorrow or can I pray with you, read the Bible together so that you can understand God's Word more? So we can explain that to the person uh, to help him to grow. It's not just, oh, believe in Jesus and then bye-bye. But we'll say, okay, how you can follow God, how we can continue to follow God, okay? And then using, how do we use the evangelism, experience God evangelism? We can make friends with people whom we see and be kind and helpful to them and find opportunities to chat with them and share with them about our experiences of God's blessings and respond to their needs and feelings. So we can make friends with people and then respond to their needs and, and share with them how we experience God how we experience God's help. And so we can make friendship with people, uh, make friends with people and then connect with them and listen to them. And then we can invite people to activities or even treat them with meals and then invite them to accept prayer. So we can ask them to some church activities or to our home to treat them with snacks or food and then talk with them and. Uh, to help them to accept Jesus as a Savior. So this is how we use it to do evangelism. It can be, uh, first is the personal relationship. And then secondly, we invite them to church, uh, invite them to activities or to our home. Three, and we can train people to pray for one another. So we can train people like training, the training should include building up a strong relationship with God and strong anointing in the Holy Spirit. So help them to build up a strong relationship with God that they really like God, they hunger for God, and uh, that, to, that they really hunger for God and, and pray and open the heart, reach out to God with the soul and the spirit so they have a strong experience, a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do they, 
How do they know they experience a strong anointing? They will feel the peace and the, and the power coming to them, the comfort over the body, the swaying of the body, or people falling down. All these signs, not just falling down. All these signs shows that they're experiencing God's presence. So we want to train them. And then we also want to help them to take care of different problems in their life. The sins, the lust, greed, negative thinking and emotions, and influence from other people, marriage problem, personal relationship, and evil spirit. So we want to help them to take care of different problems. Uh, because if a person has different problems, then he cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. So a person needs to build up the relationship with God and take care of his different problem. But you might say, what motivation do they have? The motivation, we talk about four points. First point is God is almighty and is full of love. He's full of love and He's almighty. He can bless us in every way. And the second is that uh, He really treasures us. He loves us. We are important in His sight. And third, if we have a good relationship with, with God and we love God and obey God and serve God, God is very happy and bless our whole life. Do you want God to bless your whole life? Do you want your whole life to, ble to be blessed and go to a higher level? and enter God's perfect plan. And number four, if we don't follow God, if we don't obey God, we don't serve God, we uh, follow sin, we continue sin, then there is destruction to our life. Then we lose everything. You know, if it's serious, the person can lose everything. So do you want to, to be blessed by God? Because He's almighty. He cares about you. He, has, he loves you. And when you love Him, you can receive power. So the motivation, if I say in a simple two sentences, is like this. God loves you and He has the power to bless you. When you love Him and follow Him and serve Him, He'll bless you. And then if you don't, then there will be destruction. Then you lose the blessings from God. So do you want to, to follow God? So we motivate people to have this heart to love people, to care about people, to pray for people, to care about the people uh, in the neighborhood, to care for the neighbors, their friends, their relatives, and to care for people who come to the church, who just come to the church to visit the church. So we care, care for them so that we build up the relationship with them. So, so, we, uh, so the motivation, when we have this motivation, then we want to build up the relationship and take care of the different problems and then build up the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then three, see, Ability to listen to people and empathize with them. So they need to be trained to, instead of saying, oh, you just pray, we need to understand people's feelings. It's think of, you know, uh, if we have this experience, how it will affect us. For instance, if people yell at us, we know that then we'll hurt inside, then we'll be unhappy. So we empathize with people and say, oh yes, I heard that uh, your family member hurts you, so you feel very unhappy, and I know that it's difficult for you. So we empathize with them. I know it's hard for you to live uh, with your family members, and they hurt you uh, so many times. Okay, and then ability not to give pressure to people, but to care for them. So don't just pressure them and say, pray, pray and ask God to forgive you now and give you eternal life. No, we don't pressure people. We just say, now is the time to believe in Jesus. Do you want Jesus to give you eternal life? When you confess your sin and ask God to give you eternal life, He'll give you eternal life right now. So do you want Him to continue to bless you? He will bring blessing to you. If the person says, no, not now, then we can say, okay, uh, not now, but I hope you think about it. I hope you won't forget about God. I hope you start to talk to God and ask Him to help you. And then you'll find that God is real. And you can start to ask God to forgive you. And then you find that God will start to talk to you and, and tell you about your sins. And you feel unhappy about your sins. You feel uh, guilty about your sins. And that is God working in your life. So, and then practice laying on the hands on people to help them to experience the Holy Spirit. So, people can pray for one another and lay hands on people and not to push them. And just put the hands lightly on the person. And when we pray, we open the heart and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful. You are so good. I thank you, Lord, for your great love. I thank you, Lord, for your great love. And then when you do that, 
uh, with your open hearts and then people can experience the Holy Spirit and ability to follow um, on people to grow in the Lord so we need to train people to follow up on people to help them to to help other Christians to grow stronger how they can learn to uh, pray to God to have strength from God to read the Bible to obey God and to grow in God and tell people about Jesus that's how the church grows so we need to learn to train Christians train Christians so that they you know they can they can grow in the Lord and also they will use this method of uh, experience God evangelism and then build up a prayer team of the church a prayer team to pray for people who come to the church the prayer team should be trained in the above training that uh, the training above that they will be trained to, to how to have a strong anointing of the Holy Spirit and how they can uh, take care of different problems of the sin and how they can listen to people and counsel them and lay hand on people to experience the Holy Spirit and not to give pressure and also when people uh, experience the Holy Spirit how to lead them to believe in Jesus so we train them how to do these things so this is uh, the job of the pastor to train the members and then the prayer team will invite anyone who comes in the church to accept prayer for strength or for evangelism so we can invite people who come to the church and say, uh, uh, you know, they will go, go up to them and talk with them. And then they'll say, would you like me to pray for you? So we, we, we invite people that we pray for them. If they're willing, then we ask them to stand up. Please stand up. Now, if they don't want to stand up, it's okay too. They sit down. But when they stand up, it's easier to feel the swaying of the body. And then we say, now, uh, please open, close your eyes and open your heart and open your heart to God and, and really love God and desire God. And when I lay hand on you, pay attention to how you experience, experience His presence. Have you experienced peace and comfort and the swaying of the body or... Uh, comfort to the body and different things that you could experience okay the prayer team will invite people and then it's important not to pressure people and not uh, and to allow people to reject being prayed for so when we ask people uh, do you want me to pray for you that allow people to say yes or no you know, if they say, no, it's okay, uh, it's okay. And I, st I still ask God to bless you and help you. And so first we want to talk with the person first, to build a relationship with the person first, not just, not just to pray first. First, we, we, to make friends with the person. And then at the end, we can say, are you willing to, that I pray for you? And if the person is not willing, we say, okay, it's fine. And, and I hope you pray to God yourself. And then... If the person is willing, it's best that we ask them to stand up and then we pray for them. And there should be evaluation of the prayer team members. This is for improvement and to prevent some improper behavior of the prayer members, of the team members. So we evaluate, ask them how it is when you pray for people, uh, did the people respond to you, did you... Uh, were you gentle with them? Did you give them pressure? And how did they respond to you? Uh, do they, do they uh, respond positively to your prayer? Or do they feel pressure? Or do they avoid you? Now, if they avoid you, don't, don't go after them. If they avoid you, just let them be. And hopefully, because we don't want to drive people away from the church. And then the team members should be appreciated in public, that we tell them in public, well, come out and we thank you all and, and we give them gifts to thank them for praying for the people and they receive the training and are willing to help the people. So that's, that's how to build up a team of members uh, to pray for people. That, these people, in the future, they, they can become uh, people who serve God in the church. So it's important that we train people to serve God that we don't just it's not just a pastor who serve God but we train people let me explain this uh, briefly again so I hope that you uh, for the experience God evangelism 
we converse to the person to respond to their needs and feelings and then share with them how we ourselves or someone have experienced help from God and invite them to, uh, to receive the laying on of hands and then we ask them to open the heart, relax and let God uh, work in the heart and then after the prayer we say please keep your eyes closed Are you, have you experienced anything during the prayer and then if the person has experienced the work of God then we say this is from the Bible the Bible promises that that God can be experienced so do you think it's from God that you experience this peace and comfort and the burdens go away the burdens go away if you have experienced that it shows that God is working in your life now you have experienced the work of God do you want God to continue bless your whole life you want God to continue to bless you. If He's willing, then we explain Jesus uh, is God and He has come to die for us and give us eternal life. So are you willing to accept Jesus as your Savior? If He's willing, then we lead them in the prayer to confess the sins, ask Jesus to forgive them and to, uh, to give them eternal life and be willing to follow God. And then uh, ask the person if he has sincerely repented and ask God to forgive him. If he has sincerely repented and asked God to forgive him, then God has for forgiven him and he has eternal life. And, uh, and then we tell them how to continue to follow God, to continue to repent of his sins and trust in Jesus as Savior and have a personal relationship with God and love God and obey God and serve God. And then how do we use the evangelism, experience God evangelism? We can make friends with people around us and we can talk with them and build a relationship and find a chance to pray for them. And we can invite people to activities or even to snacks or meals to, uh, and then ask them to accept the prayer. And then uh, also in the church, we train people to pray for other people so we build up a, a strong uh, the prayer team and then uh, they build up a strong relationship with God and they learn to take care of different problems in their life and ability to listen to people and empathize with them and not to give pressure to people but to care for them and practice laying on our hands so you can practice that after we finish now an ability to follow on people to grow in the Lord to help them how to grow in Jesus Christ and also we can build a prayer team to train the above things to to be able to counsel people listen to people and pray for people and follow up on them and lead them to prayer and to follow, believe in Jesus and how to uh, continue to follow Jesus and then the prayer team will invite people to come to church to pray for them they could be new Christians on new mem uh, new people coming in or or Christians uh, of the church too we can pray for the church members now it's important not to give pressure but to give people good feelings that we care for them when they say no we don't we don't show an unhappy face if that if we, sh we show an unhappy face next time they don't want to accept the prayer anymore and not to pressure people and allow them to say no to, uh, when they say no it's fine it's fine and I hope you pray to God yourself and God will bless you uh, and then there should be evaluation of the prayer team so we can improve and the prayer team should be appreciated in public so I hope that you use this uh, for evangelism and train a group of people in the church you know in a church we don't just have members but we have committed members we have trained members people who are trained to serve God then when they are trained then the church will become strong it's not just members who come to attend church but people who are committed to Jesus Christ who follow Jesus Christ to serve God now why are they motivated to serve God I just told you the four points God is loving and he's full of power <clears throat> and he loves us and cares about us and three if we love him obey him serve him he's very happy and he'll bless us and if we don't if we sin if we don't follow God then uh, there will be destruction because the devil will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So when we follow God and love God, God will bless our whole life and there will be reward forever. So do you want God to, to bless you forever? So we, that's the motivation, to motivate people to love God. So I, I, I motivate all my members that they want, train them all to serve God, every one of them. 
Okay, now here is a, a question here. Can someone receive all the fivefold ministry uh, that being pastor and teaching and uh, evangelist and prophet? Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Um, uh, but usually a person is stronger in some areas. Okay, now I'm going to pray for you again. Please open your heart, concentrate, don't look around. But close your eyes and open your heart to God. That need concentration, that we need to, you know, uh, open our heart to God and, and uh, hunger for God. Oh, it's raining now and the electricity is gone. It's noisy, you can't even hear. So the last session we can't finish. We'll organize and watch later. Okay. Okay, God bless you, and so you cannot hear me, and so uh, we'll say goodbye here, and I hope that you will uh, listen to this video again, and bless you all, and God be with you, and uh, I hope you train the members, uh, that we need to train each other to lay hand on people, first to take care of their problem, and we pray for them to, ex to uh, experience the Holy Spirit, it will help them to grow spiritually, and then we we'll also train them, train them to, to pray for other people, and then the church will grow. Okay, let's close with a short prayer. Uh, now it's raining heavily uh, at Washington's place. Maybe in Jeremiah's place, it's not raining. Okay, so we'll pray together. Jeremiah, is your place? Is is it raining or not? Okay, I hope you can hear me. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. And you, you can stand up too. You can stand up and concentrate. Father, we thank you. We love you. We love you. You are a wonderful God. You are a loving God. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. You're so good to me. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. We love you. We adore you. We follow you. We adore you. We want to follow you. We want to obey you and serve you. Lord, you are wonderful. You are wonderful God. We open our heart to you. Please help us to open our heart hung to hunger for you. When we open our heart, you come to us. You bless us. You give us strength. Lord Jesus, we need you. We need you, Father. We need you, Father. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. You always love us. You always care about us. Please help us to concentrate in a prayer that we love you, we adore you, we worship you, we hold on to you, we appreciate you. We appreciate everything you've done for us. You are a wonderful God. Lord, we need you, we need you, we need you. It's so wonderful to have you. Lord, we adore you. We thank you that we have you. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit that we can enjoy you. We want to enjoy you. Father, we love you. We adore you. We like you. It's so good to have you. Father, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, you're so good. So good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. And we love you, Lord. We love you. Jesus, I love you. I bow down before you. Praise you and worship you. Lord, our King, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you very much. We adore you. We need you. We hold on to you. Please help us to concentrate in our prayer, to hold on to you, that we really like you, really appreciate you. We need you, Father. We need you, Father. We hold on to you. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your great love. We really appreciate you. It's so great to have you. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. We glorify your holy name. We glorify your holy name. You're so wonderful, so wonderful. 
God, you're so wonderful. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us the desire to serve you, to pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, to strengthen the Christians in the church so that they all grow in you, so that they want to serve you, so that they are motivated to serve you. Because when we serve you, you are very happy and you bless our whole life. Lord, you bless our whole life. Please help us to concentrate in you and follow you and love you all the days of our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.